Okay, so we just watched the final block of films in the 2021 Climate Independent Film Festival. That concludes 46 films that we have shown over the last couple of days. Hello to our live streaming audience. Also, uh, momentarily, once we get the projector up, um, Ray Robison may be joining us shortly. We'll, we'll see. Uh, if not, Greg Franklin over here also worked on the film, uh, so he can re represent Ray if for some reason uh, Ray isn't able to join us. Our schedule has kind of been thrown all, all out of whack due to the technical difficulties today, and thank you for everyone for hanging with us for such a long day. We sincerely appreciate it. We just watched the film Matterhorn, which was shot in Klamath Falls. It was its world premiere. Um, Hold Your Breath by Cameron Gates right here. Zombie Walk by this gentleman, Rollin Stafford, who is also a returning filmmaker. He had a film in 2019 called Road to Bob, and last year a film called One Dead Dog. Did you have any films before 2019 that were in the festival? Before here? Yeah. Uh, no. Oh, uh, gentlemen, please grab, oh, yeah. grab mics if you would, please. Uh, Augury uh, by Greg Franklin over, over on the end there. The Trunk was by Ray Robison, who has not joined us yet, um, but if he does, uh, Greg worked on that film as a DP, so he can re represent if, uh, if Ray doesn't join. And The Traveler. Now, The Traveler and Matterhorn were done by the same filmmaker, Martin Hillegas, and he um, sent me a message a short time ago. He set aside, set aside time in his schedule to join us at the designated time. And because we got pushed back so far, unfortunately, he's unable to join us right now, but he sends his best regards. He said he loved filming in Klamath and uh, wants to come back and do it again. So that's awesome. Uh, so first of all, uh, we'll, we'll go down here. And Cameron, your film, Hold Your Breath, shot almost entirely in a swimming pool. Uh, I bet since our room has a lot of filmmakers in it, more than in anything else, we'd love to know the technical side, probably for your film, more than any, anybody else, as far as how you get people to walk on water and how you manage to shoot un underwater without damaging cameras. Um, how you get people to walk on water is you have a very helpful crew that builds basically a giant wooden sawhorse with um, cinder blocks on it the day before the night that you shoot that. Um, I'm very grateful for them for pitching into that. Um, there are water housings for smaller cameras and that's what we used in the water. Unfortunately, this camera had to be shot on three different cameras because we had pickups, a camera for outside the water and a camera for inside the water. Um, water housings are a pain because they block a lot of the controls. So you have to sort of set everything up be sure of your focal lengths and things like that, and then shoot it. And uh, Jordan Roach, who is the director of photography, also an amazing swimmer, <laughs> which was very fortunate. And so she was in the water a lot of the time, um, just doing all of the hard work of getting those shots. Fantastic. Roland, welcome back, sir. Uh, I appreciate you making the trek down from Portland. Uh, the setting for your film is remarkable, because when, when I watch Z uh, Zombie Walk, what I first think is, if they tried to replicate this on a soundstage in some way with all of the graffiti and the smoke and the utter chaos, it would probably be millions of dollars just to build that set. Yet you timed this extraordinarily well. And I remember a year ago at this film festival, we were at uh, Klamath Basin Brewery in town on our, our, at our filmmaker after party, and you were telling me you had just filmed something because Portland had the worst air quality on the planet at the time. And like filmmakers do, when you get an unusual circumstance, we don't run for shelter, we don't hide. We grab our camera and say, Let, let's go, go, go check this out and figure out how to do things, so. Yeah, well, the plan, we shot it actually two days before I came down here for the festival last year. And the plan was always to shoot it on that weekend. We just happened to get lucky. I guess lucky is a weird word. When Mother Nature decided to bless Portland and surrounding Oregon and Washington areas with so much smoke from the fires and before we went out and shooting, I had a, you know, a Zoom call with all my cast and crew and said, listen, obviously your safety and health is the most important thing. However, if we <laughs> went out and shot it tomorrow, it's gonna look amazing. And I'm, I had my, you know, my heart goes out to my cast and crew. We were able to shoot outside for two hours before we started getting headaches because, you know, no oxygen, um, but it looks great in film. I'm very glad we, we captured it. It, it looks absolutely incredible. The timing of that, to be able to film right in the midst of the BLM protests. So you've got essentially abandoned downtown. <laughs> it's covered in graffiti looking like it's the, the apocalypse. 
there's so much smoke from wildfires that it looks like, you know, what we see for cliche apocalyptic films. And all you had to do was walk outside. Like, Warner Brothers, Fox, Universal, they wish they could have that kind of setting whenever they make, like, zombie movies. And you're just like, I'll just go outside. Yeah, well, that was the idea, all that free production value. <laughs> <laughs> so did the idea of the film come first, or as things... Uh, September of uh, August, September of last year, we're, we're reaching chaos point in Portland. You were just like, screw it, let's make a film around this. No, I definitely saw downtown Portland had been transforming since COVID and the Black Lives Matter protests, and it had never looked the same. I thought it might never look this way again. So we probably should capture it. And we did. <laughs> I see Ray is, is joining us. Terrific. Well, welcome, Ray. Good timing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ray is the director of the film The Trunk, uh, where the, uh, the ventriloquist saves herself from a difficult situation. Uh, that was a film that was uh, not only poignant, but also kind of of the times, because you shot that, uh, you even acknowledge it in your end credits, uh, as shot in a rainy Medford during COVID. Uh, did you come up with that story idea in the film because of the idea of what can we film during COVID when everyone has to be spaced out? Or had you come up with the story beforehand? No, that definitely came up as a result of, of COVID and the restrictions and trying to do a film, because you know we're filmmakers and we just love making films. Um, and I hadn't really done many films during that time. And so it was, I really started beating my brain going, what can I do with the restrictions that, uh, that we have? And uh, it sort of developed in that a whole idea of two people that try to stay away from each other, or essentially because she's trying to stay away from him, it created that social distancing kind of idea that, that she's always moving away from him. So and it, it developed into that idea. And of course, you guys say Greg Franklin right there shot it, incredibly so. And, and I got a lot of compliments that from that uh, about the cinematography uh, uh, just uh, last night and the night before. Um, from, from someone that had recently seen it. Uh, what an incredible job he did with that. And uh, speaking of Greg, Greg made a, the film Augury, which was a loving tribute to early 60s TV. I grew up on watching old Twilight Zone episodes, Outer Limits, stuff like that. And it took all of about five seconds with the first time I saw your film, like, this is like Alfred Hitchcock Presents or Twilight Zone or, or Outer Limits. Did you? come up with the idea first and then decide to move it that way? Or did you think, I want to do a tribute to this and then build the story around it from there? Well, so I, I grew up too with that, with uh, watching, you know, Rod Serling and um, Hitchcock. And I thought, you know, it wouldn't be awesome to do like an, an homage to that. And so um, I, I wanted to do, you know, something that my grandmother who could watch it, you know, 80 some years old or, or you know, like a, a kid six or seven years old. So I try to make it so it's not too scary, you know, no bad language or sex or anything like that, but, but it's very clever. I wanted it to be clever. I wanted it to, to be where people could be guessing and be surprised. Um, and so I actually wrote seven scripts and I'm gonna make it into a feature. So it's gonna be like each little short is, you know, in this film. Um, and so hopefully people will enjoy that and like it. So maybe you'll see a feature of all my little films in the next two years, I don't know. But yeah. Fantastic. And uh, for those, uh, hello to everyone who's joining us via live stream. And for those who are younger, the item that Rupert was using in the film, it's called a rotary phone. They used to exist. What once upon a time, ro ro rotary phones were actually used as opposed to the little bricks we have in our pockets now. Uh, as a reminder to our audience, we have a microphone there and a microphone there. If anyone has a question for our filmmakers, please step up over to the mic and address it. And we, they would be happy to answer a question about it. Otherwise, it'll just be me asking questions. Okay, so uh, with, with that, um, Ray, uh, in regards to the, the trunk, I know I've seen those actors before in, in films. I think we've had both of them in films in the uh, Climate Independent Film Festival in past years. And my perceptions of watching that is as soon as the guy pulls up, it's just instant skeeviness. And, uh, but, and I say that in the most lo lo loving way possible. Uh, the performance is just uh, automatically just like, oh, no, <laughs> not, not, not this. Um, how, how do you prep an actor to be as pervy as possible? 
Well, with, with Scott, Scott is so talented. And I think I met him about 15 years ago. He came in and auditioned uh, actually for an indie feature that I was doing at the time um, and just really impressed me. So we used him in that and actually discovered he even had a, a production background. So I've used him behind the scenes as well. Um, you know, it, 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 he did joke a little bit about uh, what I was casting him, the role I was casting him in, and what he was going to be playing. But I knew he could very much do it, uh, <laughs> which uh, uh, not typecasting at all, definitely. Um, but uh, he's, he's very talented. Um, for those of us uh, locally who may have seen him on, on stage as well, he's done a number of productions at the Oregon Cabaret Theater. Um, but, uh, and I've used him in a number of, of different films and, and varying types of characters. Some where he's just very silly kind of person, but I, I knew he could handle this one. Um, and he's also great even behind the scenes. He's been an assistant director for me in the past. And actually this film that we're working on right now, the reason I'm not there is what we're doing pre-production for a feature called Bad Fish. But actually Scott, the, the guy that's playing that, that, that character, uh, is going to be our, our cook for three weeks on this feature film. So whatever you need done, he is just the guy to talk to about it. And I, I know that he's worked with, with Greg Franklin too, so you've probably seen him in one of Greg's films as well. That's right. He was in, one, he was in my first film, Happenstance, and he again plays this kind of hillbilly sort of kind of crazy guy so he does a great job with that Cameron your, your film hold, hold your breath um, modern horror but to me when I see your film the first thing I think of is the classic 80s slashers it is such a throwback to the Halloween series and Friday the 13th it even has like the whole dream sequence element that Nightmare on Elm Street would, would have when you made this film, was it intentional to have those, those throwbacks to when the slasher genre was king, or did that just kind of work out in the course of production? Um, definitely a lot of intentional stuff there. Uh, me and Emily Sweet, who's the a producer and also stars in the film, we were sort of throwing ideas back and forth, and we're bo we both love horror. She, even more than me, has just a great sort of knowledge base of that stuff. And so we would kind of bounce ideas back and forth of like, what if we had this, what if we had that? And then the goal was to include those things, but also hopefully take it in a direction that people weren't expecting. So, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Do we have a question over here? Yes. Hey, so this actual question is for um, Cameron Gates. I'm learning how to do special effects makeup. And I was more curious about like the blood that you had used in your film. Is it like something that you created? Is it um, just something you bought? Because the water scene is really cool, and I'm just curious how you did that. Um, it was a bit of everything. So we're using a lot of Skin Illustrator palettes on the actors' faces because those are um, alcohol-based and they don't, you know, run away in the water. Um, we were using just kind of cheap sort of blood for some of the like blood floating around in the pools. By the end of the shoot, the pool had gone a little bit purple and we had to like color correct it back. Um, and there's also some digital added blood um, to, where we needed the blood to do a particular thing and the real blood was just not behaving the way you wanted it to. So we had to add a little bit of digital. So kind of a, a combination of, you know, techniques. Okay. Thank and, you. And then also Rollin had rather extensive zombie makeup in his film. You, you want, want to go into detail about the, the zombie makeup for your pet? Well, I wish I could. I mean, the makeup artist, I wish Zach was here because Zachary Smith was not only our makeup artist, but also played the zombie as well. It was sort of a, a COVID safety thing. I wanted to find a makeup artist who could just apply it to himself. And he did. And uh, I think we bought that mask online. He provided the dentures and he put some black contact lenses in. But I really wish he was here because he could talk and much better detail than I ever, I ever could about it. <laughs> and I think we owe you a thank you, Roland, as well. And we talked about it in our pre-recorded Q&A. And as a reminder, um, we have more extensive Q&As with every one of these filmmakers uh, on the on-demand side of our, of our festival. But uh, during the course of COVID, we've all encountered at some point the people that uh, have been coined Karens. And your film eats a Karen. Which, uh, I, I guess I don't have a question. I just want to say thank you for, for that. Because I think at some point we've all, when we've in, encountered the Karen in town at some point or another, we've, we've hoped that maybe there was a zombie around. It really wasn't intentional. The Karen just sort of came out that way. I think subconsciously you see these people on the news and you're like, what is your problem? 
Well, I, I appreciated that. So th thank you very, very much You're for welcome. that. You're um, the, welcome. For the film uh, Augury, um, shooting it in black and white is, is an obvious homage again to Alfred Hitchcock Presents and Outer Limits and, and Twilight Zone and all that. Have you had a chance to show this to other audiences? And if so, have they picked up also on the fact that this is straight, this is intended as a loving tribute to early 60s TV? Well, so this um, actually premiered it for the Ashton Film Festival. Um, so since it was online, I didn't get a lot of feedback from people who were watching, but I've shown this to, you know, I think a lot of folks and they, they quickly picked pick that up. I, th I think what was most unique though, I mean, it was all shot in color and then I, you know, turn it in, in, into black and white, was that they, they realized that, I mean, the story was complete from beginning to end, and there was, you know, it's, if you look at film um, stories, you know, there's always like threes. There's like how they're shot in thirds, or there's three examples of something. And so I really paid attention. I, I read um, uh, the Hitchcock Truffaut uh, or video or um, book about how Hitchcock does film, and I just really was impressed with everything he had to say. So I was really trying to be very specific in my filming and very, I didn't want to waste one second or one minute of the film. So I just really, I, if it was not important, I, I cut it out. Um, but yeah, I think that people picked up on it, to go back to your original question, I think that they realized that it was really that homage to that, to that earlier time. Terrific. Well, I know everyone here is anxiously waiting to get to our award ceremony. So I feel like we, we should wrap this up. And again, we have lengthier Q and A's for, for each film available online. Um, but I want to give everyone a chance to provide final thoughts about their, their film and insight and if we have any final questions. So, Ray, um, do you have any, any final thoughts about the film The Trunk that you would like to share? Well, you know, The Trunk is a locally made film. And, of course, with, with the Klamath Independent Film Festival, thank you so much for including us. Uh, you know, and you're all about Oregon films. And as I look at this group that you have on the stage there, it definitely reminds me of what a community we are. Because uh, obviously I, I mentioned Greg Franklin who shot the trunk and then I'm talking about this next production and I realized, oh my goodness, Cameron, how you doing? Hey, Ray. <laughs> Cameron will also <laughs> be working with us on this production that we've been location scouting with. And it really shows, you know, I'm down in Medford, uh, Cameron's up in Portland, but it really shows what a community we have here in Oregon of filmmakers that collaborate uh, on projects, and it's great to have the Klamath Independent Film Festival be that venue that showcases that and represents the whole community, which which certainly is is uh, uh, tied together so much. Because, like I said, when I see that, uh, and I didn't even realize actually that Cameron had a film there, and and, and just to kind of go, wow, we are we are definitely a community that's spread across the state, and it is very nice and great seeing you, Cameron. Looking forward to seeing you next month. You too. <laughs> and on, on that note, Cameron, do you have any final thoughts about Hold Your Breath that you'd like to share? Um, I mean, just thank you to you guys for bringing this down. It's always wonderful to see it on a big screen. And we just kind of made it as an appreciation for kind of horror and all the stuff that kind of goes into it. And um, it was a, a great time, though a hard film to make. So, yeah. One of my firm beliefs of filmmaking is that horror is one of the most fun genres to, to make. Because while it's supposed to be scary, Getting to play with fake blood and guts and, and fake you know, movie prop knives and all that, that just seems like an abs absolute blast. It's got to be hard to not be like laughing and smiling while you're like fake stabbing someone in a pool. And <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Though Emily had to go to some dark places, but for me, it was all fun. <laughs> and uh, Roland, uh, Zombie Walk, um, any final thoughts you would love to share about your, your film of, wait, uh, I love the fact that it's basically just uh, someone in the neighborhood taking their pet for a walk. It, but then you, you take this morbid little spin on, on it. So, Yeah, you can take simple stories and just stick a zombie and it'll make it a better movie, I think. Um, just thank you to Kiff and um, thank you to everyone who watched it. I will say I'm, I've been very touched by the response I've seen from it. Um, it's less of a comedic response and more of an emotional one. People come up to me and go, I remember how hard it was last year. We had COVID, we had smoke, we couldn't go outside, we couldn't even go hiking anymore. It was the one thing we could do during COVID, it was like go hiking in Portland. <laughs> and, that, and then so I'm very happy people have had that sort of emotional response to it. Well, and also we need to say congratulations because at a festival that just recently happened, you won an award, correct? Oh yes, uh, Zombie Walk won Best uh, Northwest Short Film at Crypticon up in Seattle. So yay, nice. thank you. Wow. <laughs>
And Greg, the floor is yours, sir. If there's any final thoughts you would like to share about Augury. I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I, I was wanting to hear audience response, and I think you guys are really tired because it was like, thank you. So, but um, I hope I'm back next year. And I want to say we should thank Kurt here and the staff. They did an amazing job. So really, thank you for you. Because I don't know if you know this, but Kurt's not heading it next year. He'll be part of it, though. But you need like 10 people just to replace him. So thank you, Kurt, for everything. Thank you. Uh, gentlemen, thank you for the time. Thank you, Ray, for joining us online. Um, give us a couple of quick minutes here because we need to end this live stream. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. And then launch our award stream. So uh, appreciate, appreciate the time being on stage. Sit tight. Um, it, all of you could do me a really great favor while we launch our next stream. And that would be uh, inside your gift bags. Hopefully, everyone remember to grab a gift bag. There is a survey, and it's just a one little page thing, but those surveys are very important to us, not only to know how we can do better, which I kind of dread the responses from a technical standpoint based on what's happened today, what people are going to say, but you know, br bring it, uh, what we can do better uh, as a festival, but also it's really important for us to survey our audience for grant applications. So please, please, if you get a chance, open up your gift bag, fill that out, and then just on your way out, out the door tonight, leave that on our, our t-shirt table or, or on our check-in table. It would be a huge, huge help to us. Sit tight for just a minute or two. Let us end this stream, and then we're going to launch the award stream, and then we will give out our awards. Thank you so much, everyone, for sticking with us through a very long day and a very long weekend. We have celebrated... 46 made in Oregon films today uh, and this weekend, which has just been extraordinary. So.